So, I just went to see Rampage. Rampage! Yes, that. And, yeah, it sucked quite a lot, actually, but were any of you expecting anything different? I mean, this is a movie where a giant albino gorilla sucker punches a giant alligator in the downtown streets of Chicago. I know for a fact I wasn't expecting much different. I mean, this is the second video game-based movie we've had this year, and one in a long line of video game movies that we've had for quite a few years now, so I really was not expecting this to be any good. So why is that the case? I mean, think about it. Is there a single example of one working ever in the history of cinema? The answer to that is no. Not one single one has ever actually worked. Be it Street Fighter, Silent Hill, Super Mario Brothers, no movie adaptation of a video game turns out to be anywhere even in the vicinity of good. No matter what franchise gets adapted, who sits in the directing chair, what actors comprise the cast, video game movies seem doomed to fail right from day one of production. But why is this the case? Why is it that there isn't one example that gets this genre right? Well, to answer that, I decided to do my own video on where I think the pitfalls lie in adapting a video game into a movie. And I know that I'm not the first one to make a video on YouTube tackling this question. Video game movies are discussed by quite a lot of people, after all, because it's such an important subject matter. So what I'm going to do is split this video into several parts going over the various problems of video game movies, starting with with... One of the biggest disadvantages with movies that are adapted from video games is that the genre that they are adapted to goes against the fundamental aspects of what made them great to begin with. Unlike other genres that get adapted into movies, such as books, comics, and so on and so forth, playing a game is an interactive experience. Watching a movie isn't, unless like me, you think that you can alter the story to a bad movie by yelling really, really loudly at the screen for it to change. By taking something that is designed for an interactive medium and trying translating it into more of a passive one, you're losing one of the core components of the original source material. Often, it's actually a lot easier to do the exact opposite, translating movies into a game format. There are even some cases where the video game version of a movie ends up being much, much better than the movie itself. And this doesn't just go for films. There have been plenty of examples of games that have been adapted from another genre, specifically when it comes to books. The first Assassin's Creed is loosely based on the novel Alamo by Vladimir Bartol, The Witcher is based on a Polish series of fantasy novels. The point I'm trying to make here is that adapting passive genres like books or movies into active ones like video games is a lot easier than doing the opposite. Because if you do the former, you add an extra layer of enjoyability onto the product by introducing interactivity. But if you do the latter, you lose that sense of interactivity and so the audience is less likely to be engaged with the plot. Just take the characters in any video game movie as as an example. When playing a game, we the audience are more likely to gravitate to and attach ourselves to the main characters because we are the ones playing them. We feel like our choices are impacting the plot of the game because they are. Sure, all we could be doing is stomping on Bowser's head because that's what the game wants us to do, but in the end it still feels like we are the ones doing it. Movie characters do not have that advantage. Movies require a lot more effort to make the audience care about their characters. Great actors, well thought out scripts, competent directors, not to mention many more elements to help build a connection between them and the audience. That's not to say that video game characters don't have that same level of work put into them as well. I mean, hell, just play Final Fantasy 6 or 7 to get an idea of that, and those characters don't even have discernible facial expressions. But it's a lot easier for video games to forge that connection with their audience than movies purely because of the nature of its medium. We're more likely to get attached to Ezio Auditori as we make him jump across rooftops than we are to Michael Fassbender playing some random guy doing the same thing without any input from us. I bet you can't even remember his character's name in that movie without looking it up, can you? As a result of this, the characters and plots of a lot of video games get dumbed down in their movie counterparts because they just don't have the same benefit of being in an interactive experience. There are even some examples of games that do the inverse of this by turning themselves into interactive movies. You know the kind of games I'm talking about, Metal Gear Solid 4, 
4, Kingdom Hearts 2, Heavy Rain. All of these games are heavily laden with hours and hours of cutscenes and huge gaps between gameplay. Telltale Games is a company which practically patented this idea by having whole games basically be long animated movies, only with the occasional quick time event fight sequence or piece of multiple choice dialogue. But again, these games still have an element of interactivity to them, some even more so than other less story filled games. Your choices and decisions literally determine the outcome of each episode of The Wolf Among Us or The Walking Dead. It might seem like a cell shaded animated movie to the onlooker, but your actions have huge consequences on how the story will progress. That's something that just can't be said of movies. So adapting a game into a movie is a difficult feat right from the word go because these are two mediums that do not work in tandem with each other. When you're adapting an active medium into a passive one, there's inevitably going to be some content lost during that process. But it's not just a simple case of loss in translation that makes for bad video game movies, there are other problems that work much, much deeper than that. Because, in all honesty, there's some great potential for storytelling in video games. The myth that video games can't tell great stories has more or less been forgotten by this point. Video games are not only capable of telling good stories, but are also able to tell some of the most unique, thought-provoking, and moving stories in modern media. Take Metal Gear Solid, for instance. This series has spanned decades and features some of the most nuanced, innovative, and intelligent stories in the medium's history. It has deep political themes, powerful characters, damn near revolutionary ideas for video games of the time, and yet if it were translated into a movie, it would probably suck. Why? Well, that leads me into a second problem with video game movies, and that's cramming too much story into one film. A problem with adapting a lot of video games, or indeed really anything, into a movie is the sheer amount of content to compress into a two to three hour format. Whenever you adapt anything into a movie, there's the inevitable reality that some of the original content will get cut or changed for the sake of making it work. And video games often and make for the most difficult to adapt, especially when you consider the sheer volume of stuff that you have to cram in a lot of the time. Take Warcraft, for example. This is one of the biggest gaming franchises in the history of the genre. It established itself as one of the original online games and has an endless amount of rich lore, story, and history to its world. So much so that it would be impossible to tell even a fraction of it in a single movie. And yet, that's exactly what they tried to do in the live-action film version of the game. And yeah, they completely failed. No surprise there. It's the equivalent of taking all three of the Lord of the Rings books and trying to squeeze them into one film. It just won't work. So this is another element that can bog a video game movie down. There's sometimes just too much content to be wrapped up in a two hour long film, especially when some video games nowadays have hours and hours and hours worth of content to get through. Have you ever seen any of those video game cutscene compilations on YouTube? A lot of the time they run well over three hours long. Imagine trying to squeeze all of that down into two hours, the amount of story you'd have to cut, the number of side plots and characters that would have to get thrown away. It would be an insane job having to do all that, and that's saying nothing about the stories which take place over multiple games. However, sometimes video game movies suffer from the opposite problem when there's no real content to adapt. While some games have huge, expansive worlds and characters to get through, others have damn near no substance to them whatsoever. Super Mario Bros. is a game series about a plumber jumping over ravines and stomping on a giant monster's head. It doesn't make for much of a story, so naturally when it came to making a movie based on this game, there was nothing there to make a movie about. So they just created their own insane ridiculous plot surrounding these characters, such to the point that it barely even resembles what they were trying to adapt. So while some games have stories that are almost too rich and full to make a movie out of, others have damn near nothing to do with them and you're just left going, why should we even bother making it to begin with. And that's not to mention some of the weirder elements to games like Mario Brothers, which leads me, coincidentally, to... Another aspect of video games that makes them difficult to turn into movies are the elements that just do not translate. While Metal Gear Solid is a solid game series, <laughs> 
Uh, I'm so sorry. There's plenty of things in it that just would not work in a film. Having it take place in the 1980s with a gritty realistic setting authentic to that time period, but still having things like holograms and e-cigars and hyper-advanced prosthetic limbs, that really would not work in a film. All the goofy, awkward attempts at humor that are sprinkled throughout the games, the over-reliance on nanomachines as a plot device. Nanomachine. Nanomachines. 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 These are all things that work in a game much better in a movie because there's greater room for suspension of disbelief. In a game, you're not going to be spending too much time questioning plot contrivances or out-of-nowhere humorous moments because you're just too wrapped up in the gameplay to care. Again, movies do not have that advantage. They're under a greater obligation to have their stories make sense, to have the dialogue and plot weave into a cohesive pattern that works for the overall product. You're more likely to question the logic behind, say, two characters having a fight like this this in a movie than you are in a game. So the threshold for the audience's suspension of disbelief is wildly different between the two genres, which can provide some real problems when translating one to the other. But with that being said, this is a problem that varies from franchise to franchise, because audiences nowadays are kind of willing to believe anything they see in movies. I mean, if we can buy the idea of a Norse god doing battle with a whole army of zombified henchmen, throwing lightning bolts at them on a rainbow bridge whilst the giant green ring Rage monster does battle with a humongous wolf, we can kind of buy anything these days. But with that being said, there is a bigger problem facing video game movies that's a little bit more soul destroying, and it quite simply is. The biggest and most surface level problem facing video game movies is quite simply one of money. There's rarely ever that much talent willing to throw themselves into making a video game film, especially when previous examples of this medium are so widely considered to be terrible. If you look at the list of people who have directed video game movies, you'll notice that they aren't known for doing much of note. The director of the most recent Tomb Raider film, he's known for directing mainly Norwegian productions that few people outside of Norway would have ever heard of. And he's never directed a big Hollywood blockbuster like Tomb Raider before. The director of Rampage, Brad Payton, his two most recognizable credits are San Andreas and Cats and Dogs 2. Paul W.S. Anderson, director of the Resident Evil films, his average film score on Rotten Tomatoes is 28%. That's hardly a great track record. Even previously acclaimed directors like Warcraft's Duncan Jones, who directed Moon with Sam Rockwell, or Assassin's Creed Justin Kurzel, who directed the praised film version of Macbeth. They don't seem to have the capacity or even interest in making a good video game movie. They either brought in because the studio demanded a director and they simply did their job for a paycheck, or they legitimately tried to do the best they could and it just turned out to be too big a project for them to finish effectively. In any case, no director of any video game movie has been able to get it right yet, and I honestly do not think any of them ever will. The biggest problem facing video game films might simply be that Hollywood has little interest in putting the right people behind the wheel. Due to the critical and often commercial failure of video game movies in the past, the studios are unwilling to put a ton of money or talent behind making future films in this genre and thus only create more examples of bad video game movies. It's a strange vicious circle that Hollywood has gotten itself into. They basically say, oh well, video game movies don't make money so we won't throw much money behind them. That way there will be a greater chance of them sucking which will only prove that video game movies are terrible, and then so on and so on and so on. Nothing changes, nothing gets altered, and still, video game movies remain bad. So one or a combination of all of these factors may be the cause for most video game movies being so terrible. One, a clear lack of understanding of how to cross media genres, specifically one of a passive medium and an active medium. Two, the misunderstanding of the plot and or characters of the franchise that you're adapting from. Three, the far lower bar set for suspension of disbelief set by movies as compared to video games, and four, a general lack of interest by the Hollywood system to invest much time and money in making them any good. So does this mean that video games are doomed for the rest of time and they will never ever be good? I'm of the opinion of yes. I mean, we've had decades and decades and decades worth of them, and not one of them has come even close to getting it right yet. However, does that mean that we can't translate video games into a medium that is similar to film, but not quite the same? I'm not too sure about that. 
While some games have very cookie cutter basic plots that don't have much weight to them, other video game movies suffer because they're unable to cram in all of the story that was established in the original lore. But that being said, there is one way that I think it can. Instead of making these games into movies, why not make them into TV shows? I mean, really think about it. With movies, the most you have is two hours at most to tell your story, and if it's a story as big as some modern video game franchises, that's gonna be difficult. Go much longer and you run the risk of boring your audience. Go much shorter and you run the risk of losing a whole ton of stuff that was integral to the original story. But in a TV or online show, it works a little bit differently. You can stop at whatever episode you like and pick up again whenever the mood takes you. If you want an example of what I'm talking about, just watch the anime series Castlevania. It has the gothic design of the game down to a T. It holds true to its characters and story, even expands on it in a way that doesn't feel forced, and pretty much succeeds where countless video game movies have failed. You can watch Castlevania having never played the games and still enjoy the hell out of it, but if you're a fan of the games, you can enjoy it just as much if not even more because of its authenticity to something you love. That's something that shows are able to do much better than movies because they have more time to develop their stories and their plots, much more so than movies can. So instead of Nintendo coming up with a Legend of Zelda movie, why not invest in a Zelda TV show? Who wouldn't love to see a series revolving around the world of Breath of the Wild? Wild. It would be like Game of Thrones meets King Arthur. That would just be epic to watch. Like I said, there are plenty of good stories and characters in video games that can be explored in other mediums. It just happens to not be movies. The main problem with translating games into movies is that movies are just far too constrictive. There's more rules set out in place in making a film than making a game. Add on top of that the number of fans of the source material that the movie has to please, often on a very limited budget with very little faith from the high ups, the notion of making such a film and it being successful is beyond unlikely. Perhaps instead of attempting to throw the same shit at the wall over and over and over again and expecting it to stick, maybe we should try something a bit different. As stated, there are plenty of other mediums that we can translate games to whilst maintaining the spirit and the story of the source material. Because unless we don't, video game adaptations will more than likely remain right at the very bottom of the barrel, and that is where they will stay for all of time. Time. So guys, that's my thoughts on the problems with video game movies. I hope you agreed with my points, and if you didn't, or if you had anything to add, leave them in the comments below. I love hearing what you all have to say. And as always, hit the like button, subscribe, thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.